Hi, welcome to Sean's Boost the Garage. Today I'm going to start a series on installing an electronic boost controller on my new edge Mustang you see behind me. Um, <clears throat> I bought uh, I bought the uh, Innovate SCG1. Um, I'd been looking around and uh, I came across this one and it, um, I guess one of the things that interested me in it was that it's kind of an all-in-one gauge. It has a wide band um, integrated into it as well as boost. Um, it'll display your boost and controls the boost. Um, it was, I didn't really see any other ones that would do that. Um, not at least for this price point. So, um, this whole kit was probably about, uh, I'm in Canada, so it's a bit more, but I think, I think right around $500, like with taxes and delivery and all that stuff. So, um, so I didn't think it was too bad considering you can get you can get uh, and do a lot more money than that if you really want to. So um, one of the things, one of the other things that really attracted me to it too was uh, it has a couple built-in fail safes. So a couple of the, or at least one of the fail safes that this has is because it has a wide band tied into it into the controller when it senses it's lean at whatever you set it at. So you can set the parameter. So say if you wanted 12 and a half to one AFR, so if it went any leaner than that, then it would pull boost. But it's only gonna be able to go down to as low as whatever your wastegate spring, spring pressure is. So I think mine's around five PSI, but I run the car on a boost at 15 PSI. So be pulling 10 pounds of boost out of it. So hopefully whatever happens, um, it will, pulling that 10 pounds of boost out will be enough to, uh, causing major damage. So here's the box that it came in. Um, I'm going to take you over to my bench here in a few minutes. And I'll show you everything that came in that came in the uh, box. Um, one of the other things that's uh, uh, neat about this too is it has some software. So you can either program the controller through the software or you can also just control it through um, there's two buttons on the display and depending on you know the, se the sequence of um, button pushing you can uh, program it that way too so anyways uh, this this is gonna be a three-part series so this one is this one today is gonna be about kind of what's in the box and an overview of what this controller will do and uh, the second one will be about the installation and then the third one will be about the programming of it so um, anyways hopefully hopefully you stay tuned and um, you know we'll, we'll get through this and uh, I don't think it's going to be too hard of a uh, install to do, to be honest. So hang tight, and um, we'll be right with you. So one of the, one of the things with this boost controller is that you can control it, or sorry, you can program the controller using the two buttons that you see here, or you can also uh, program it through a laptop. Um, it comes with. Uh, uh, let me see here. It's got. Uh, this is an accessory kit. It's basically all your, it's basically all your vacuum lines, um, T's, clamps, whatever you're going to need. Um, so programming cable, uh, this would be the, uh, I believe this would be the O2 sensor cable cable. This is the, the uh, solenoid valve. Some people call them a Mac valve. This is what the gauge controller talks to, um, depending on what kind of boost you've commanded for the controller to uh, have. So it'll either vent or block off um, pressure. Um, got a bung here that, uh, that the O2 sensor, or sorry, the Y band sensor goes into. And this is the mount for the uh, solenoid valve. So, I mean, it all looks uh, it all looks to be really good stuff. Um, also, it comes with a uh, four bar map sensor, and of course, here's the wide band, which is essentially kind of just like an O2 sensor. So, yeah. Anyways. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, this is going to work well for me. Um, right now, I have a uh, manual boost controller, so one of the things I have to do now, like if I want to um, change my boost, is I got to 
I got to get out of the car, pop the hood, change the um, the regulator by like just a, a fraction of an increment, and go and go and test it again and see what I got for boost. So at least this, I'll be able to. Uh, I'll just I'll just be able to control this right from the car. So I should be able to go in here and change the duty cycle on the uh, solenoid valve. And um, I mean, I'll still have to do, I'll still have to do some test pulls or whatever, but, um, but at least I won't have to get in and out of the car. And, and you're, you know, when you're, when you're adjusting the regular valve, you don't really know how far to turn it. And sometimes you do, sometimes you turn it way too far and end up over boosting what you're looking for. So um, it takes some use to, some uh, getting used to um, this thing here. Uh, I think I'll be able to just creep up in increments till I get up to, you know, 15 PSI or uh, whatever I decide on. Anyways, just a little overview. Uh, I'm hoping that this is going to be a good controller. I've seen some reviews, some mixed reviews. Some people say they don't like it. Some people say they do. Um, from what I've, from some of the reading I've done, I think people just haven't taken the time to um, really dial it in properly. And one of the things you have to know to really get this right is what your wastegate spring pressure is so and so i believe mine's five psi if not i'll test it to be sure um and uh because that's one of the that's one of the pieces of information you need to enter into this controller for to uh, control it properly so um anyways i'm hoping uh like i said hoping this is going to work out well and it's a good boost controller and if not then uh we'll take it out and we'll move on to something else so um anyways thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later okay well anyways not too much to this video it's just really just the unboxing um to show you what's in it and um next video will be the installation um which i don't think is going to be too difficult to do really um just going to tie into the vacuum Mount it in the car, power it. Um, we'll have to mount the map sensor, and I believe the map sensor would probably uh, plug right into the back. The vac, the uh, map sensor vacuum line would plug right into the back of the uh, the gauge controller, and um, that's about it. Really, shouldn't be too difficult. So, um, oh, and then and then of course we'll have to uh, hook up the vacuum lines. Um, from the wastegate. So anyways, I'll uh, try to go into um, some pretty good detail about that, show you how it's all done. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.